Hello everyone, welcome to Coffee with Mary. You have a unique look, own it. Own that look. Ooh, this thing landed a punch. <laughs> Coffee with Mary is your morning pick-me-up for any time of day. Look what I got. My new spring mug. My new coffee mug. It's springtime. Look at this. Coffee is always a good idea. I got this from the Family Dollar Store for just two dollars. So I bought myself two and I will show you the second coffee mug in next week's episode. But I told you I was going to get a springtime coffee mug and I did. I got two of those. I took my Let It Snow mug and I put it away in the cupboard. Isn't this perfect? So today I am doing my first cooking segment and I am so excited. As I promised last week, I am going to show you my recipe for tomato herb and bean soup. This is very budget friendly, a cheap meal to make. You can stretch it out for a couple of days, packed with a lot of flavor. Very important that, that these days with so many people staying home, that we stretch our dollars as much as possible but nobody should be missing a meal. I am doing this cooking segment because I want you to have a good hearty meal that you can stretch for a couple of days and that will help you to stretch your dollars and that will take some stress off of you. Also something that you might have heard in the news is that we could be in for a meat shortage. So this is the perfect meatless meal, very hearty, healthier meal. Your family, I believe, will really enjoy it and it will help you to stretch your dollar. I will show you the new bowl that I purchased from Family Dollar. So sit back, relax everyone, and I will be right back after the cooking segment. Start with four cups of pinto beans and wash thoroughly. To make this into a quick meal, either prepare the beans the night before or use canned beans so that all you have to do on the day of cooking your soup is to put all the ingredients together. The cooking time then should be no more than 30 minutes. Also, be aware of the sodium content if you use canned beans.
you can find some really nice, very beautiful dishes and cups and things of that sort at, at your dollar store, your local dollar store. Just, you can find a lot of, a lot of hidden treasures, as my boyfriend said. My boyfriend said that whenever I go to the dollar store, that I find these hidden treasures. For me, this meal cost below $7 because I already had the, the margarine butter substitute and I already had the salt and pepper as well and the Mrs. Dash. This is a cheaper meal to make. You don't have to put Mrs. Dash in it. You can put your own seasoning in it. So if you were to purchase Mrs. Dash, um, they, it goes for about $3.45 at the local grocery store. And uh, with the salt and pepper, you can get that for $4 or a couple of dollars. But for me, this, this meal cost below $7 because I already had Mrs. Dash and the salt and the pepper and the butter substitute or the margarine substitute. So if you were to buy all of those, this may cost, this will cost you a little bit more, but it will still be a very cheap meal to make. And the seasoning that can last you for several different meals in the future. So please keep that in mind. Also keep in mind the sodium content and the canned tomatoes. I used a 20 ounce canned tomatoes, two 20 ounce canned tomatoes for this recipe. I used diced tomatoes and I used the crushed tomatoes, which that gives a thicker consistency. That will give a thicker consistency in your soup to thicken it up a bit, to give you that, that thicker tomato broth for the soup. Keep in mind the soft content or try to find the canned tomatoes that don't have added salt or are low sodium. Okay, so be mindful of that. Also, one ingredient that I did not show in this recipe that I often add to this soup, I add a little bit of sugar to it to make the soup a little milder in taste. Um, it still has a lot of flavor, packed with flavor. You can do that if you like. If not, then that's great. You will still have a very, very good and tasty soup. But feel free to add your own ingredients, add your own extras to this recipe because this is really, I call it a base recipe. Something that you can fix and you can just tweak it any way you want. Add a little bit of this, add a little bit of that. And it has been reported that we are in for a meat shortage or that that is likely to happen. So this is the perfect meal for a meatless dinner, meatless lunch. It is enough for you to really feel satisfied. Like and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe so that we can bring more of these shows to you. So please remember to subscribe, like, click that notification bell, and we will bring more of these shows to you every single week. Have a beautiful week, weekend. God bless you all and keep safe. We're going to get through this together, okay? All right, and that's for you, Perry. Bye-bye for now, everyone. Now the CDC recommends wearing a face mask in combination with washing your hands, social distancing, and not touching your face. So you can have the coronavirus and not know it. You can be asymptomatic and spread that disease to somebody else. So we have to do everything we can to protect ourselves and I'm going to show you how I make this mask without having to sew. So this was how I made my mask. I started out with a scarf bandana, that cute pink scarf bandana there, and I used two elastic hair bands. And, uh, and so you fold the scarf, you fold the piece of cloth in half lengthwise, and then you make another fold so that you have a thinner strip of the scarf. You, you insert both ends of the scarf through the two hair bands. And you slip it through, you slip it through. You are making a three-part section of this, of this cloth. You fold one side in the middle and then you pull the flap from that, from that end, from that one end. Then you fold the other side of the middle and you tuck that other end of the scarf into that fold. Smooth it out and you have your face mask.
Also, if you go to the CDC website, you will find instructions on how to make a face mask. I have the links to below.